All right, so the weather is beautiful and I wanna go fly, but there's a problem. I don't have a truck. See, no truck. My truck is in the shop right now to have transmission work done on it. So here's my idea. I'm gonna try to one wheel to the LZ. All right, so this is what I'm bringing with me. Take only what you need to survive. My helmet with the GoPro on there, chest mount, because that's what holds myself when I'm flying. 360 cam so I can get some dope footage. Bike lock so people hopefully don't steal my one wheel. And my wing, and the bag. Of course, <laughs> my paramotor. That went uh, not as bad as I thought, actually. Um, but we're here. Back doesn't hurt all that bad. Definitely sweating, though. I was getting here. These people look at me funny for vlogging. We're out here. We do have some people here at the uh, park. They all just got here. They're all adults, and they seemed interested. So um, I'm going to send it and uh, call it good. No idea what way the wind direction is, but that's good because it'll just psych me out. could have gone any better <laughs> oh my god that was sketch but dude it worked out it worked out all right so quick little story about that park there so this is my neighborhood hello neighborhood and um that's our amenity center uh, and i've launched there before but i've done it at like 6 a.m Right, there was nobody there when I left, when I launched, and nobody there when I landed. So, the only thing I had to worry about there was pissing people off in the morning. Um, so I've only done that two times. And I haven't heard any complaints on our, our neighborhood Facebook page. But, today, like I said, man, I, I haven't flown in like a week, and I can't, I just couldn't wait for my truck to get back. This is what an addiction is, you guys. <laughs> it's what it is. Another issue is this road used to be closed. That was my exit to the neighborhood. So now I gotta go this way if I wanna be legal and not fly over uh, any houses or people. I gotta fly up like, along this tree line here. So I'm gonna do that. Oh, I got smoke right here. It looks pretty smooth. Yeah, and I definitely launched mega crosswind slash downwind if you believe that fire smoke there. All right, so that might be a good topic for this video. Yeah, that's all I'll do. I'll talk about risk as I see it, my risk profile. And then we can also go over um, some of my like sketchier times paramotoring. So uh, first of all, that that launch. So I, I, risk-wise, I'd put that at I don't know a three maybe. And the only reason it was risky is because of the LZ choice, right? It was surrounded by trees. There were people around. I mean, they weren't at any risk of getting hurt. But um, still, it, it it can make people uncomfortable. The LZ was surrounded by trees, so if something were to go wrong, I didn't have much room to. Um, abort. Next, I I knew that I could take off there. I've done it before. Okay, so it wasn't like I didn't know if that was long enough. And you know, I've launched obviously a bunch of times. And um, so there was, I wasn't worried about that. So it was a confirmed LZ. I've done it before. Not ideal, but it was confirmed. Um, so risky launches. I my risk profile 
I don't know. I have a problem with it sometimes, and it's it's a bad thing. I have this thing where like sometimes I like things to be dangerous. Like I get a rush out of that, or a, I don't know. It kind of turns me on. Kind of like gets me going, and that's not always good. So sometimes I check myself on that. But I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. But sometimes I'll I'll accept a risk profile higher than usual just to get that that rush because I mean flying paramotors is not a rush it's something different it's it's calming it's relaxing it's fun uh, but it's not really a rush your my adrenaline's not pumping while I'm doing this um, this is cool sorry I got distracted by the uh, coolness let's get out of this field been here long enough Taking video of me. Weather-wise, I'm I'm pretty conservative. You know, excluding times like that last weekend when I flew with Paradigm. That's probably the, the nastiest weather I chose to fly in. I've got caught in some nasty stuff before, but that was the nastiest weather that I I actually chose to launch into. And I mean, I asked questions first. I consulted pilots better than I. I said, you know, what are your guys' thoughts on this? How do you feel about this weather? You know, they said, well, it's not ideal, but, you know, it's safe. It's safe enough. But aside from that, I don't usually choose to fly in non-ideal conditions. Um, I, I research my weather pretty heavily before I fly. And I'm not at all against going out to the uh, LZ if it's marginal. And then uh, packing up and going home if I don't like it. I've done that a bunch of times. Let's talk about close calls with me with paramotoring. So the one that you guys are all probably aware of was uh, that botched launch I had where I uh, had bad apples a couple years ago. I basically ate it off launch uh, because I launched with a wet wing and I just, I wasn't, I wasn't skilled enough to know what to do at the time. And I stalled the wing and it came down. I only dropped like five feet, but I wrecked the paramotor. It didn't hurt myself, um, but it was a uh, financial lesson that I learned uh, and very humbling. I'm actually looking back, glad that happened to me. Uh, because I got out of it with no injuries, but uh, a lesson learned. Expensive one, but still a lesson. Beyond that, I've gotten caught in some nasty weather before. I got caught um, during, it was at another fly, and we were doing a race, a two-point race, or three-point, I guess, where we had the race from the start to a gas stop to another gas stop and back. And that was only sketchy. Well, no, that was sketchy for a bunch of reasons. One... I was flying beyond my skill level. I got lucky, nothing bad happened, and I actually ended up winning that. But uh, I was definitely beyond my skill level. The weather was great in the morning, but I ended up flying into midday to some nasty thermals. And I mean, I was fine, I could fly the wing, but the thing about, when I say my skill level wasn't there, I had taken an SIV course, I was on a hot wing. I didn't have the reflexes to recover from a collapse, right? I knew the theory, but I, I mean, I knew the theory when I went into the SIV course too, and that all went to hell the second I <laughs> collapsed my wing, right? I had to learn it. So I didn't have those skills back then. And then we also made, I mean, we flew in rain. I, I flew through rain, like pretty decent rain. My wing was soaked and I actually ended up landing in a field because of the rain. And then the flying buddy I was with, but she's like, hey, we can still fly in this. I've done it before. I'm like, all right. I launched out of this guy's front yard, and it was the sketchiest launch ever. Um, by far my sketchiest launch. Launched out of this guy's front yard. I don't have it on film. Uh, toward bushes, toward power lines. On the other side of the power lines were railroad tracks. There was zero room for air. It had to all go perfect where I was going into the trees. And the... The race and, you know, wanting to fly with, with these, you know, better pilots influenced my decision that day. And also, I was far away from home. I didn't really feel like walking back. So, looking back, poor decision. I got away with it, but uh, it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, I definitely won't do that again. In the air scares, I haven't done anything really, like, bad in the air. I've never taken a major collapse while flying where I didn't intend to. Um, I did one time... Again, this is me when I was a, you know, a new pilot, and I was showing off for some family members who were watching me. You know, I, I took off, and I was doing like what I thought were wingovers. They were not. I did not know how to do wingovers, and I had very poor energy management skills. And I came out of a wingover, tried to go straight, ballooned, uh, and ended up going weightless in my seat, which scared the living hell out of me. 
And then the wing shot forward. I was I checked it, swung back under and went into a turn, but god damn it, dude. That I remember that day, I remember thinking, oh my god, Tom, you're such an idiot. What are you doing? And looking back, I mean, did, people that have never seen a paramotor before, they think it's cool just to see you fly. You don't have to do anything like, like a wing over. They don't know that's hard to do. They don't know that's cool. Even a set kind of just looks like a spiral. You know, people, they probably think anybody can do that. So it just, it, it's a showing off for people now, it, it almost doesn't make sense to me um, because I've seen paramotor from the ground and it doesn't, look, it doesn't even look cool. So beyond that, I've been fortunate that I didn't make mistakes before I knew what I know now. And again, I'm still not an expert, um, so I still try to take, take things as slow as I can and be as careful as I can. Oh man, I went and flew myself into a congested area. Let me get some altitude. All right. So I'm trying to think of any other times when I've had like a close call. Um, nothing really stands out in my mind. I've definitely had smaller ones that were eye-opening and I feel like I got away with something. Um, and each time that that's happened, I have, I've literally sat down that night and thought about it, reviewed the video if I had it, and you know, talked to myself and said, dude, don't ever do that again. Or what could I have learned from that mistake so that it, it's not much worse next time? Uh, I actively do that. The scariest time in paramotoring, or actually it wasn't even paramotoring, it was my SIV course. So the SIV itself, everything was awesome, loved it. Uh, I learned so much and <clears throat> it's got me wishing I had a wing that I could practice that stuff on myself. I, you know, I want to do sats, I want to take this wing and do a sat so bad. But, you know, I spun my first two sats in the SIV, I nailed my next three, but and this is a new wing. It's not going to recover like that wing I was on in the SIV. So I'm just, I can't do it yet. I don't, I don't have it. The next SIV I do, my main focus is going to be getting competent with my sats. I'll bring this wing, do it over water, and uh, then I'll start doing my sats on my motor. But yeah, the 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 SIV. T -t -t Today, Junior. Yeah, I learned a ton. It was the reserve throw. So I, I made a video about this. I don't, if you guys haven't seen it, I'll put a link above. But. I had a reserve, or I threw my reserve on purpose, and just to see what it was like to throw a reserve and come down in a reserve and how it handled it, and none of it went as you planned. I, I, I threw the reserve, I was like grabbing at the wing and trying to get the wing in when I'm over water. Who cares about the wing? I get unbuckled, you know, looking back, but I didn't do that, and I hit the water, and it was windy that day, and the reserve reinflated and pulled me back through the lines, and I just spun me over. I had a hook knife on me, didn't even think about it. I knew the hook knife was there, but I went into sh panic mode. I started freaking out when I started getting pulled. It's kind of embarrassing because it's, I don't know, I wish I had, was better. I wish I had done better. I remember thinking that if the boat wasn't there that day, that was it, I was drowning. For, like for sure looking back, I just, I had no control. I was grabbing at lines thinking they were uh, like straps on my chest that, for the harness to get out of to stop pulling me. None of that. I, I mean, I was not getting out of there, and I was panicking, so I was using up all my oxygen. And it was just bad news. Bad news. Eventually, I just gave up. Not gave up, like gave up, but I was like, no, just calm down. The boat will be here in a second. They'll pull you out. But that was the only thing I, I could think to do was just stop and let the boat come get me. And that shook me up the rest of the day. I was on vacation there in Florida with my family. Went back to my sister's house, and we were hanging out, and... I was just sitting there like glassy-eyed thinking like, dude, is this all worth it? What am I doing? Like looking at my kids thinking like, what the fuck am I thinking? Am I being selfish? I had all those thoughts and it, they stuck with me for a couple of days. I left that SIV with a, a much different risk profile. Just, I, I don't know if I can describe it, but I'm more in the attitude of like, just enjoy flying. Enjoy, enjoy the flight and don't, don't add any other risk to it than there needs to be. And I'm articulating this terribly, but um, I just I, I came back and I'm just like, okay, that's enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna dial it back a few notches. And you know, let my skill grow a little bit more and um, I'm happy to have barrel rolls and wing overs and sats eventually and flying with the paradigm team. That's you know, I've achieved what I want to achieve in the sport, more or less. You know, if I if I had to stop now, I'd miss flying, but I wouldn't think I didn't I didn't do good, you know what I mean? So I can't really think of anything else risk-wise that I've taken that, that I regret. I definitely will admit that I've gotten very lucky a few times. Um, 
you know, some things went well that, that could have went worse. And looking back, I could have planned better. But all in all, I'm happy that I got to where I am in the sport without a major issue. And if anybody made it this far into the video, if, if you have any takeaway, if you're in that uh, section of the Dunning-Kruger curve where you're feeling like, damn, I'm good at flying, and I, you know, you've only been flying for, you know, it doesn't matter how long you've been flying, but if you're feeling like you just got it figured out, just just check yourself, man. Just take a step back and think, do I have to be pushing it this hard? Or don't. Maybe you, you enjoy that. Maybe you like to live life on the edge like that. I don't fault you for that either, because like I said earlier, I, I get that feeling from time to time, so don't listen to anything I say. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to keep flying. Um, and try to find some cool spot. Hopefully the GoPro lasts until I get back. I'll probably turn it off and try to catch the landing because uh, that should be interesting at the park. And then I got a one wheel home, <laughs> which is gonna be rough. And I'm sure pissing people off because I'm circling this field forever. So I will catch you guys later and I'm gonna go find somewhere cool to fly. Peace. So fun. It was nice up there tonight. Wow. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, airplane pilot. <laughs> One day. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, you're gonna be an airplane pilot soon. We'll see. Yeah, good flight. Uh what my GoPro, my GoPro battery died, but uh yeah, uh in conclusion, I don't like launching and landing from here. There's too many people. Everyone clapped and cheered, but that's just not I I don't like it. Um and other news, I saw a motorcycle accident on the road back there. It's kind of in my brain right now. So, yeah, it's not going to be a regular LZ for me for sure. But um, good flight tonight, and uh, I'm going to get back on this one wheel here at home. You hear all those sirens? Hope that guy's all right. He did not look all right, though. Flew over it. It was uh, I saw a motorcycle in the middle of the road, and I saw a guy, and I saw them ripping his shirt off a bunch of people. So um, that is not a good sign. I kind of got a sick feeling in my stomach. But sorry to end it on that note, you guys. But I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not already, please subscribe. It helps the channel out. Uh, it makes me feel good. Um, so unless you really don't like me, why wouldn't you just click the button? And um, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that jazz. And um, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace. Thank you.